All right, well today we are at the Goodwill and we are about to head in and see what we can find that we can flip for a profit. So here we go. Well, one of the first things Dagny found and she passed off to me was this Bunnykins set. You guys know that I'm always picking up Bunnykins and this was $4.99 for the cup and the bowl. That was a pretty good deal, so I did grab that. The second thing I noticed was this canister here for $6.99. And I absolutely loved the floral pattern on it. It was made in Portugal and it was just so brightly colored and fun. And it appeared to be rather modern, but I made an exception on this piece. And I did decide to grab it. Now, unfortunately, I did notice there was a chip inside of the lid, but I still bought it. Up here, I noticed a stangle plate or dish, I guess you could call it. It was kind of rounded, but it was stangle. It was the blueberry pattern. There was a lot of chipping on the edge. A lot of these stangle pieces, they chip easily, and so I did pass on that. This B plate also caught my eye, and I have put some sold comps there on the left. They had it for $2.99, and it doesn't sell for very much. Dagny's sugar was still there and if you've been watching the videos for very long I said that the next time it was there she would purchase it and she did we found Jack's candlestick and Dagny attempted to jump it unsuccessfully there were some apple shaped bowls that were marked Italy and they didn't have a very high resale value so I did pass on those you can see I was still holding on to that honey bee plate and um, I did pass on all of those things. I didn't take any of them. I liked this square plate. You can see it had a decorative hanger there on it, but they had it for $2.99 and it didn't sell for very much. So I did not mess around with that. There were some poor little nativity figurines falling off the back of the shelf that I adjusted there. And I found this mug. This mug is very modern, but it is a giraffe mug. And I liked the giraffe stylistically. He wasn't completely realistic, but he was kind of cartoonish. And he was $1.99. I thought he was adorable. I figured I could get $8 to $12 for him. Granted, I don't know the resale value on that. I could not find any comps, but I grabbed it anyway. Now, this, you're probably wondering why. Well, as you can see, I found a broken spoon bowl and I suspected it could be silver. So I submitted it to a test of dropping it to try to listen to the tones. Silver gives off a very high pitched tone when you drop it. And so it, it did pass the test and I ended up throwing it in my cart and taking it with me. After showing it to the cashier, he said I could have it, which was very nice of him. This vase was from Toledo, Spain, not Toledo, Ohio. And this was a little cup. I liked the design on it, but I did not see any markings on the bottom. Either they weren't there or they were covered up by the sticker, so I didn't bother looking at that any closer. And we've got some empty carts blocking the aisles. I'm not really sure what was going on here. I imagine somebody just decided that they were done shopping and they just left. <laughs> but it was an interesting, an interesting thing. So I decided to share it with all of you. Dagny found this little grape tree. And it's a shame because it looks like it would have been held by a vessel of some sort and may have fallen out. I liked this acorn. And it was marked home goods on the bottom for $6.99. Now I did find this moon and stars canister and this is the larger of the canisters. I've put some sold comps there with the lid. Unfortunately, this was missing the lid, so it didn't have a very high value, but I'm always on the lookout for those. I've got a rooster mold. Now this I liked. I liked the applied leaves to it. Unfortunately, you can see that there is some damage there on one of the leaves. 
and it did have sticker remnants of a Made in China sticker. There was a basket there. I found this blown glass piece, and I'm not sure exactly what this was supposed to be because it had holes in it. So I did leave that on the shelf there so it wouldn't roll off. Now I found a Jim Shore piece, and I usually pick up Jim Shore pieces. I paid $2.99 for this, and you can see the comps there on the left. I probably could have left it behind, but I usually pick them up. I found out later it was damaged, so I kind of regret grabbing it, but um, that's just a reflection of me not looking closely enough at the things that I am buying. So always look closely because you don't want to pick up things that have chips and cracks. That was melted wax. We thought they were squishies, but it turns out that they were just melted, deformed wax. This Pyrex bowl had gone through the dishwasher a few too many times. Don't put your Pyrex through the dishwasher. Now there was a stein here. It was six ninety nine. And I went a little back and forth with this stein. I did end up buying it. And I remember somebody teaching me a lesson about steins and how you can tell the German steins from the American steins. And it has something to do with the lever. But for the life of me, I cannot remember who that was. So I apologize in advance for not crediting you with that information. But there is, um, with the lever there, you can usually tell that they are German and um, I liked this stein for some reason, and I decided to buy it. Now, this was interesting because there was an inscription on the back for 2018 about the bestest of friends, and apparently the friendship did not last very long because it's 2021. <laughs> This glass bowl, I liked the pattern of this, and unfortunately, I was not able to identify it. So if you know what this pattern is, please let me know in the comments, because I liked this bowl. It was only $1.99, and I felt like I would regret leaving it behind. And so I did end up grabbing it in the hopes of identifying it later. got a little spode box here and I attempted to open it but eventually got distracted by this box which had a shell on it. It wasn't nearly as exciting as the spode box which I never really got back to. Now, there was a little bag of turtles here and there was one that caught my eye. It was a nodder so I pulled that out to test it and fortunately the nodding mechanisms were not working and so I did put that back into the bag and I noticed a picture up here, but the picture had a Made in China sticker on the bottom. There were some candle votives over here, and I liked the texture of them, but there were a lot of them, and I just wasn't sure who made them. And so I ended up passing on those. I did spot this shell dish here on the shelf and the bottom did not look to be aged at all. So I did pass on that piece. And yes, I see the turtle. There we go. I do pick up this turtle trinket box and look it over. However, I did end up passing on this I can't remember why exactly, if it had any broken petals or what. There was a nicely painted dish up here. And when I say nicely painted, I mean it was reminiscent of something my daughter would do. Now I did check these candlesticks because I am on the search for Mackenzie Childs and I still don't know what I'm looking for. So I check every modern candlestick. We've got some trinket boxes here. I always look at trinket boxes. And we've got an ant that appears to be jamming out on the piano. 
Dagny found this skewered bowl. I'm not really sure what exactly is going on there. Here was another little trinket box. Unfortunately, the little mechanism was flimsy, and so I did pass on that. It was probably made in China anyway. I did like these glasses, so I took a closer look at these, and these are actually made by Anchor Hawking, and they are Essex-style drinking glasses. They have a resale value, but they are very cumbersome, and, and there are a lot to ship, so I did pass on those. This vase was modern. You could see the sticker on the bottom. This luster piece appeared to have been very well loved. <laughs> it was very faded and worn. This box down here it was labeled glass and so that caught my attention and inside there were some Libby glasses these are the Libby juniper green water goblets and they were distributed by Arby's I believe this tray was only a dollar ninety nine and it appeared to be embroidery or stitchery of some sort the actual tray itself you can see was pretty beat up but i in my mind was thinking we could sand that we could bring that back to life and i liked the tray and for only a dollar 99 i decided that i would grab it try to bring it back to life and maybe stick it into one of our booths either in carlisle antique mall or antiques marketplace of lemoyne Now I did find a teapot here and the bottom had a warning message that it was for decorative purposes only, not for food use or for tea use either. <laughs> these glasses, I liked these. They were actually quite thin and I considered grabbing them, but I wasn't sure who made them or what the resale value on those would be. And even now I have not been able to find any comps on those. So I'm not sure whether or not I made the right decision on those. Dagny was also drawn to the teapot. We had a little lacquer box there on the shelf. It was $1.99. It had a modern barcode on the bottom. This vase, unfortunately, made in China and not a whole lot of value there. Now I did find this art glass bowl. Now this is not a piece that I would look forward to shipping. However, I would be interested in possibly sticking this in one of our booths, which I did. And I paid $4.99 for it. So I figured I could probably get between $30 and $45 for it. So I did buy it. I did not see any markings on it. But I liked the colors and the swirl. So I thought that was a nice piece. We've got a mustache mug on the shelf. <laughs> I liked the shape of these mugs. They were possibly giveaways or something of that sort because they were branded there, as you can see. Down here, these are chargers, and occasionally I will look at chargers. These woven chargers, I don't discount, but those ones were very worn, and so I did pass on those. We've got a made in Greece vase. A lot of these I find are tourist pieces and don't have a tremendous resale value, which is why I typically pass on them. However, I'm waiting for the day I pass one up and I regret it. Now we found some plates that matched the teapot. 
Decorative purpose only, not for food use. <laughs> may poison your food. May poison. May or may not. Dagny found some binoculars. And I don't know a whole lot about binoculars. So we weren't really sure about those, but they were fun to play with for a few brief moments there at the Goodwill. This three-dimensional chess set was interesting. I had never seen something like this before, and the comps were decent, but I wasn't sure if all the pieces were there. And I found a box of thimbles. And I know thimbles can be very collectible, so I did look through here just to see what they had. I like the looks of that thimble that I pulled out, but there was a birdhouse thimble in there as well that retails for upwards of $20. So I grabbed a whole box of thimbles and stuck them in my cart. Now this art pottery bowl, I really liked the glaze on it. Obviously it's a green drip glaze and it was, it was a heavy piece, but it was $1.99. There were no markings on it and I just liked it. So I grabbed it. This bowl didn't have any markings on it, or if it did, it, they were hidden under the Goodwill sticker. So I did pass on that. Dagny found this beautiful candy dish. It, it had an M monogram on it, but it was really neat and we were kind of shocked that it had not broken or been broken. And so I did decide to grab this as well to stick in my booth. And um, she was a little nervous about putting it in my cart, but I assured her that I'm a professional and I will show you how it fits in right there. That's the spot. Look. Perfect. Now these bowls were, they reminded me of Blanco. And so I did end up grabbing these. I don't think they are Blanco, but if you know who makes these, let me know in the comments um, because, because they were similar to Blanco, but not quite the same, but I still grabbed them anyway. And they were $2.99 for all three of them, a dollar a piece. Now Dagny took it upon herself to gather up all of these glasses and put them together there on the shelf. I noticed this box up here and it said holiday wine and I was curious so I reached in and we had a little Santa goblet. Unfortunately it was broken but I did take the entire box down and decided to look a little closer. The only one that wasn't broken was the wreath. Unfortunately all of the remaining goblets were all broken. These candlesticks reminded me of some of the cube candle holders that I have been picking up recently, but they weren't quite the same, so I did leave those. Dagny found this little boot, and it was marked Made in China, but it did look German. She also found this bag of a tea, tea set, a bag of tea sets. I don't know. It's a bag of tea set. And um, there were cups and saucers and a teapot and everything you need to have a tea, tea party. This appeared to be a made in India piece. I'm not positive on that, but that's what it reminded me of. There were no markings on it. It wasn't a very decorative box, but I didn't see that as having a very high resale value. And so that is something I we also passed on for $4.99. Then I found this, and I wasn't sure exactly what it was until I popped it open, and I had I had difficulty doing so, as you can tell. But it says, these precious photos are my valued treasures. And I thought of Juliet because she's been taking a lot of photos with her little miniature Polaroid that we got her for Christmas, and I figured she could put all of her photos in this because they would fit perfectly, so I grabbed that for her. Now this colorful elephant tote, I also grabbed, not necessarily for resale, although I'm not sure if I will end up listing it, but I figured that this could carry a lot of stuff and I'm all, I'm very pro carrying stuff and having things to carry stuff in. And so I did, I did take that with me. 
I also found this. It is a hand-painted wooden vase. I do believe it's a vase. It could also be a candlestick holder, but I'm leaning towards vase. And I grabbed that because I loved the colors of it. Dagny found this trinket box. It was very nice. There were a few chips on it, and they had it priced for $5.99. And then at the same time, we reached for this David Winter's Cottage. Unfortunately, they're very often chips, and this particular one did not have a very high resale value, so we left it. There was a saw blade clock here. Very creative. And of course, I looked through the purses, and I found this purse. And this was kind of a strange purse, and I figured this could be worth money. It was marked Zach Pos Posen, Posen. And I did look it up, and it does have a pretty decent resale value, so that was pretty exciting. Now, unfortunately, I did not have the opportunity to film an outro for this video because about... One minute after I filmed this clip, I got an error message on my SD card that all of the footage was lost. So fortunately, with the help of my friend and viewer, Peter, I was able to recover this video for you and bring it to you now. But there is no outro. <laughs> so if you saw anything that Dagny picked up that you would like to purchase, you can check out her eBay shop, which is linked down in the description under the shop with our friends link. And as always, my eBay shop is also linked down below, but I hope you all have a very wonderful day and I will see you tomorrow. Later.